Welcome, everyone. I'm Somuro from Myanmar. Currently, I'm here at the ABNTS, uh, and I will be your host for this workshop. So it's nice to see you all, and welcome again. And I also hope all of you already got the information and um, instruction that you need to know in the in the main room for this morning. Now, before we begin, uh, uh, let us pray together. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you so much for this wonderful day that we are gathering together to learn something new from our speaker today. And thank you for all the participants. Uh, we also pray for the Holy Spirit to guide us. And, and also we also pray for a good internet so that we so that everything goes nicely without any distraction. Uh, in Jesus in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. <clears throat> so uh, I would like to introduce uh, our speaker today. Uh, her name is uh, Sarah May Balusa. If I uh, correct me, if I uh, pronounce <laughs> my pronunciation, my, I, I cannot pronounce properly actually. <laughs> so <clears throat> Sarah May Balusa. Palusa is from Cavite, Philippines, recently uh, finished her MA in Christian Communication major in Multimedia Studies at ABNTS. So her passion involves uh, media-related works and mission. She loves hiking, photography, and going on to adventures and meeting new friends, new people, so she also has the heart uh, towards children who suffers from social injustice. So, <clears throat> and she even wrote her master's thesis around the subject of OSEC, online sexual exploitation of children, and used her passion in photography uh, to spread awareness about it. Uh, she is currently preparing for her new journey as a Filipino missionary to Thailand this coming month. So uh, welcome our speaker, Sarah Maybalusa. Hello, everyone. So um, before that, I would like to <clears throat> announce that maybe after this workshop, um, you can stay for a while because we will have like a coaching session with Kelsey later. And um, yeah, can you give me a thumbs up if you can hear me clearly? And my connection is good. So hopefully this, uh, like a very short time, we will be, uh, we will have a good time. And at the same time, we can learn from each other. So I want to actually this uh, workshop to be more interactive so i will somehow ask you questions and if you don't mind answering my questions don't worry it would be so easy and uh, like what i said i want it to be like a some sort of like a conversational type um, of workshops. So yes. So as you can see on the PowerPoint, the title is single, but not sorry, embracing and exploring the gift, the blessing and fun of being single in the ministry. So I will not actually um, begin this workshop with a question, with a cliche question, every time we have a single, con a single workshop. I will ask you, I want to ask you, what made you smile today? So does, um, do you have any random reason what made you smile today the moment that you wake up? So I will, uh, I will share first. So while I was actually preparing my uh, breakfast and preparing my, for this workshop, I just randomly saw my cat who was looking at me with a sleepy eyes and that made me actually smile. So that's the one, so very simple. So I hope you had uh, uh, an experience like that. So um, does anyone wants to share what made you smile today? Okay. 
So, do you want to share something? What made you smile today? Come on, don't be shy. We're just few here, so... Okay, someone's raising their hands. Um, I smiled today yeah. because it's a, it's a beautiful day here in central Queensland, Australia, and I'm glad to be alive, and I love the Lord today. It's just beautiful. And this, this conference is just wonderful. So thank yeah. you. Thank you. Thank you, Anna. Thank you so much for sharing. How about you, Sean? Oh, can you hear me? Hello. Yes, we can hear you. What made you smile today, Sean? What made me smile today was, yeah. well, seeing my friend Zeke and cleaning the church. And also, <laughs> well, let's see. Um, and also, um, and also play with my cats as well. Oh, yeah, that's good. Sorry Very good. That. Thank you, Sean. Thank you for sharing. Okay, so that's very good hearing. Hi, hi, Sarah. Okay. I miss you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hi, Shad. I miss you too. So that's very wonderful that, um, you know, simple things made us smile today. Actually, it's not that very connected with our topic today, but that's fine. Um, so our uh, workshop will really revolves around the single ministry, not only for women, but also for men as well that are single-handedly uh, single doing their ministry. So ministry here, just want to clarify, is not just the preaching ministry that we used to, that we are, you know, I'm familiar with not only teaching ministry, but also the uh, music ministry if you are involved in um, the worship team or if you are involved in uh, the technical side of ministry, which is media like me, then that is also a form of ministry. So ministry is kind of broad and a little bit clump complex. And that's why so many of us can somehow, you know, um, hear that uh, being in the ministry is kind of hard, which is very much true. But at the same time, just imagining being in the ministry as a single person is quite difficult. But we will not lean on that side of the coin. Instead, we were going to really embrace and really appreciate the gift and the blessing and fun of being single in the ministry. So, um, like I said before, it's going to be a, a very interactive workshop. So I hope that um, you will have the confidence and the, the freedom to really share what you have experienced. I um, just want a little bit, a uh, little disclaimer that I'm not really expert about this one because I haven't really been in the outside the field. So also I want to introduce myself. I'm Sarah again. So it's a little bit um, hard right now, especially for all of us, but I know that we can learn from each other's experiences and hopefully we can really um, share what we have uh, what we have in mind. Okay, so before that I will share you a movie clip. Um, so let me uh, I will share you a movie clip about the topic today, okay? Oh, sorry. This is what. This is what I do. I'm gonna end up alone, just like he did. Chandler, Heckles was a nutcase. Our trains are on the same track, okay? Yeah, sure. I'm coming up 30 years behind him, but the stops are all the same. Bitter Town, <laughs> Aloneville, Hermit Junction. <laughs> uh, you know what we gotta do? We gotta get you out of here. Come on, I'll buy you breakfast. Let's go. Well, what if I never find somebody? Or even worse, what if I already found her, but I dumped her because she pronounces it supposedly? <laughs> Chandler, come on. You're gonna find somebody. How do you know that? Hmm. How? I don't know. I'm just trying to help you out. 
you'll see. You guys are all gonna go off and get married, and I'm gonna end up alone. Will you promise me something? When you're married, will you invite me over for holidays? Well, I, mean, I, I don't know what we're gonna be doing. I mean, uh, what if we're over at her folks' place? Yeah, I understand. You can come over and watch the Super Bowl every year, all right? You know what? I'm not gonna end up like this. I'll see you, man. Okay, so that was actually a clip from a very famous American uh, TV series, which is Friends. Um, it's actually uh, Chandler who is like very much um, stressed out for being single. And I actually uh, use that as an illustration because that is most of the people felt of being single, especially when it comes to um, like a societal perspective. Like being single is lonely, being single is, is not fun. So that's how the society actually thinks. But we have a different perspective, especially we have we have a different perspective because we have Christ in us, right? So um, the movie clips is actually showing Chandler moments. And most of us can somehow relate with that Chandler moments that especially if we are like um, seeing our our friends that was uh, one by one getting married or getting engaged or having their their uh, boyfriends and girlfriends somehow we kind of feel that way but i hope that after this workshop we will not feel that way because there's so much things that is in store for us especially when it comes to the ministry um actually um According to Christopher Hudspeth, he actually has so many things that was enumerated of, uh, especially in the subject of perks of being single. And I just actually ended up with just five of them because I think that these are actually the most important thing. So first, the perks of being single or the benefits or advantages of being single in the perspective of the world is first, you can focus on your well-being. So well-being means the holistic um, part of a man, you can be uh, like uh, focus on your well, your health, focus on your psychological needs, focus on your social needs, focus on your physical and spiritual needs. So that's the most. I will be very quick on this perks because we the, you know, the creme de la creme of our, our, of our discussion. And then the second one is you can actually save money instead of spending it on dates, which is very much practical these days that we don't want to spend money on not, uh, not priorities. But if you have a special someone, of course, they are your priorities. And then third perk is you can actually do and go whenever you like, wherever you like, and whatever you please. So there is the freedom of doing whatever you want to do during that time. So that's the third peak, according to Christopher. And then the fourth peak, perks, is you're the boss of your, of your own time, which is probably connected with the third perks. And it's already self-explanatory. And then the last this is the very important perks of all, is that the last slice of pizza is always yours. No ifs, no buts, and no ends. So you don't need to share it. That's all for you. So that's actually how the, um, the enumeration of the perks of being single according to their version, to the worldly version. But... We actually have a different version, which is um, uh, this one. Oh, that one. I'm sorry. So actually, you can observe that the perks in a very worldly vision really revolves or really focuses on self. 
self-improvement, self-indulgence. Um, it's their own, you, 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 you. So it's, it focuses more on the self. Okay, so bear in mind with that. So, but our version of being single is far way different. It does not focus on us. It focuses on him. So the perks of um, being single, especially in the ministry, like I said, how complex the ministry is, is that it actually gives you more time and focus with God. So just what is said in Matthew 6, 33, that I uh, seek you first the kingdom of God and all these things, all the improvements, all the, um, what's this, all the, the success, the stable job and all the things that the world offers will just go second. The very first priority that we can have during this season is our relationship and our time with God. So like what, um, what like uh, Dr. Lena said that, it's very, very important to really be founded first. Our relationship, which is focusing on the Lord. So um, next is the greatest relationship that you can have during this season is your relationship with the Lord which is pretty much obvious, right? Because uh, those uh, relationships are just second, but this one is the very foundation of everything. So our society dictates a different outlook on the single season or the singleness or those people who actually, there are actually different kinds of singles, those who are waiting and those who really decided to be single. And that's a gift, actually. That's a gift from God. And so Paul speaks about this as a gift. You can actually see it in 1 Corinthians 7.7 7, that Paul himself acknowledged that this season is a gift from God and no one can actually question that. This season is a gift from God for us to enjoy. Being single does not comes in our lives twice so that's why we really need to um, emerge ourselves in that season and really maximize our potential the gift that the skills that the lord has given us and um next uh thought uh in single uh, of being single as a gift it is the relationship that will help you our relationship with god that will help you solidify your identity in Christ. Many of us um, will hear, especially in the society, that, oh, I'm single because of this reason, but it's okay because this is the time for me to really find myself, find what I like, find what I dislike, and find the things that really suits me. It's more on self again, but Actually, in our perspective, this is the time that you will see your identity the way God sees you. And that's very important because the more you know about God, the more you will know about yourself. And the more you know about yourself, the love and the blessing and the mercy will just flourish in your life and towards the people around you. They will really sincerely um, feel that genuine love and genuine grace and genuine love that is coming from you to God through you. And then the second, I'm sorry, I'm a little bit fast, but that's okay. Um, the second, uh, the fourth is actually, it is a gift because God will allow you to see his ways in most unexpected time. So like what I said, um, we need to really turn up this season because it will never um, come twice. And at the same time, this season has so much in store for us. Um, looking at the story of, um, of Adam and Eve, actually, that is somehow uh, always as given as an example when it comes to this one, to this topic. 
looking at uh, the story of Adam, Adam was first single, right? Right? <laughs> um, the Lord created him alone first. And we can see that Adam, God created Adam first alone, and yet he is complete. He is satisfied. He is busy, busy in the assignment that the Lord that has uh, that the that the Lord has given us, and he is pretty much occupied with that um, work with that duty that the Lord has given him. And no one can say that being single is like missing half of your life or identity. No one can say that because even though you are not romantically linked with someone, but you have the greatest relationship of all time, which is your relationship with Jesus, your relationship with God. And that's the very foundation of everything. Your relationship with God is the very foundation of your identity. And no one can actually um, question that. So I'm a little, um, I just want to uh, go back on the, 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 the point here. Um, the greatest relationship you can, you have during this season is re your relationship with God. And I think it's very much, um, it's really important for us to really appreciate this season and then really embrace. Don't waste your time waiting and be, and just, you know, not being active. Don't waste your time being passive. Waste your time being proactive. There's so much things in the field and in the ministry that you can actually focus on. And that's you know, that's a gift, right? So have you noticed in our churches today, most of the activities are actually led or somehow supported by what? By who? By single people. Because they have all the time that you needed for that project, for that camp, for whatever the church needed. Not that I'm saying, okay, we're not making comparisons here, but not that I'm saying that married people or coupled people doesn't have any time, but we kind of have that lots of time to maximize our time, especially in the ministry. So this season can give us all the time that we need to have to uh, to grow as an individual, to grow as a community, especially we're not just an individual, but we are part of a society. We are part of community. Church is a community and you can have all the time to really, um, what's this? To really improve that relationship that we have with each other. And that's very much important. So you can never say, that being single is a very lax or very dull season, but this is actually the most important and most exciting season. And like what I said in Ecclesiastes 318, there is time for everything. And we need to really embrace that um, time that we have right now. And then um, the last, a thing that we have here is being single is a gift for you to enjoy a gift is meant to enjoy and not just you know you need to appreciate the gift so that you can really feel that this is a gift and same as here in our season uh, this uh, in this um point being being single in the ministry. So there are times that I, I, I kind of heard so many stories about um, people or single ministers who actually experience discrimination, which is pretty much a, a reality for all of us, especially for those who decided to just go there alone, especially in the field. I haven't experienced that one because I have, I'm not yet there. I'm not yet there in Thailand, which I will be working as a missionary 
But I have uh, heard so many people, single people who actually uh, experienced dis- dis- uh, discrimination. Like there is this one story that one minister um, actually said to this person that you are not capable of doing ministry in this uh, in this um in this church simply because you are single you need first to get married or to find a partner so that you can actually do the work because two is better than one <laughs> it's crazy but i think i will not really agree with that but you know the lord will do amazing and unexpected ways for people who do- doesn't believe you feel that god God's got you. There is one uh, story that I I read. Uh, sh- uh, this person is a missionary, and uh, she was actually a single woman, and she's actually leading uh, like a seminar or a study about how to become a good pastor's wives or pastor's wife. Coming. And this uh, lessons or this study is actually led by a single missionary. And actually, people are kind of like asking, is she even capable of, you know, sharing the knowledge or wisdom? Because she's not even, she's not even married. She's not a pastor's wife. And yet, the Lord actually you know, um, let the wisdom flow over through her and the people or the, 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 the pastor's wives whom she is actually teaching actually believes her, even though she is not one of them. And that's how, how God can really work in your life. As long as you let God work on your life, as long as you are available, as long as you have time, as long as you are there in the moment when the Lord needs someone to be the hands and the feet. And like what I said, never ever accept the the statement that you are not capable because you are single. No one can tell us that one. Because like Dr. Lena has mentioned, there is no hierarchy in the calling of God. And that's pretty much what we really want to embrace and what we really want to um, acknowledge, especially for those people, for young uh, women and young men out there who felt like they are doing things alone. No, you are not doing things alone. You are with God and even for those people who actually um, decided to, you know, to follow the Lord and really uh, just be exclusive and um, just solely for the Lord, you are not alone. And yes, that's one of the things that we can appreciate. And then there are actually practical things that we can appreciate during this season. And that is this uh, five things. Being single in the ministry is actually, um, has given us so much practicality, which is first flexibility. You can actually do whatever you want, whatever time you want, and what, you know, whenever you are needed. I just want to share, I'm actually part of a worship team in back in my um, school. And we are actually, uh, ha- we have this allotted time to only practice that time because most of us are students. And there is one person in our group that is actually, that has family. And um, during that time, I think we were kind of phasing a little, uh, phasing so much adjustment just to suit, uh, just to fit on the time of this person because uh, to, ju- let's just be real. Her, this person's time is not flexible because she has, this person has a family. And for us singles, we can just do whatever we want whenever and 
wherever we want. And that's one thing, the practical thing that um, we can somehow appreciate in this season that especially in the ministry, ministry can, um, you know, comes and the, the, the need is there, the, you know, just go there and help out. So there is flexibility, adaptability, which is pretty much obvious because the only con the it's very cliche the only constant thing in this world is change and we single people are very much adaptable in every situation especially when it comes to the ministry when you are called to missions it is, if you are single it's very much easy for you to be uh, you know to adopt gracefully and with agility and that's really a gift and that's really something that we need to appreciate also not that i'm saying that married people doesn't have any adaptability ability but we have the most of it and then next is open-mindedness so there is um a lot of space for you to be creative at the same time, especially in the youth ministry, if you have that uh, open-mindedness, then it's very much effective in the ministry. And at the same time, you are not boxed on someone's opinion, right? So you can actually take so many, so many ideas from the people around you and just be open to whatever idea is very good. And then less drama, of course. Um, I, as part of the NYI, sometimes there's a couple leaders. I don't want to uh, compare, but these are just some of my observation. That if you are a couple in the same ministry, and then there is going on inside your relationship. Actually, people will kind of feel like they are watching a Korean drama because there is this awkwardness in the air. And for single people in the ministry, there is pretty much less drama. So we need to appreciate that as well. And then the last is the freedom, of course. We are always, even the even in their version of um, being single, they actually kind of appreciate and really acknowledge the freedom that single people actually have, the freedom to choose, the freedom to uh, do whatever you want, the freedom to be creative, the freedom to just be in the moment. And at the same time, it's uh, the freedom that uh, other people will, can also benefit with. So that's the practical things of being single. Okay, next is the fun. This is actually one of the things that I'm really excited about. The fun of being single. I heard so many youth out there who are saying that being single is dull like it doesn't have any excitement or fun at all no there's so much things that is going on around this season and of course uh, number one that is obvious there is you will have a time for exploration time to explore what is inside your head, what is inside your heart, time to explore your societal skills, how you connect with other people. This is very important, especially when it comes to the church. This is very important to explore um, what are the church needs or what are the church that, oh, what are the things that the church needs and the things that should be done in the church. Um, this is the season of exploration, not only within, but also outside, like what I mentioned, your friends, your family, your, um, if you are mentoring someone, that is the time to explore their, uh, their social values, their, uh, their um, life values, and such things like that. 
And then this is also the time for spontaneity since you all have the time, the, the freedom. You, you are not locked in a very standard, um, you are not boxed, you are not uh, um, kind of limited you don't have any uh, like a fixed schedule you can actually have that spontaneity and i don't know but for me spontaneity is actually exciting and good but for those who doesn't ex- uh, uh, um appreciate spontaneity then that's okay and then next is um you can have and you will have during the season a wider social group So you can actually have, you can, you know, be friends with anyone, just like what I have here. I have my friends here whom I very much love and whom I very much am thankful for. So wider social group is uh, very also important, especially um, when we are dealing with uh, the youth and things like that so no one can really say that um, being single in the ministry is not fun because it is fun at all you will have more time to your friends to your family to your pets if you have so that's very important okay so i'm a little bit um fast but i just want to have like a very short discussion after this so that's why i'm doing this one so for the golden nuggets i hope you learn something from what we are um, discussing about so if you want to get the the some the, the some ideas that i actually had here i can send you the the powerpoint and also the manuscript that i have right now so the golden nuggets first and foremost is your greatest relationship just like what dr nina said i will not conclude but i will just go back to the first thing that we have discussed is your great um, being this season is actually a gift, a gift to enjoy, a gift to nourish, a gift to really emerge with. And also, you must also remember that your greatest relationship during this season is not your relationship with, a, a, with other people. But your greatest relationship during the season is a relationship with God. It is, the re- it is this relationship that will help you solidify your identity in Christ. And your identity in Christ is what matters most. It doesn't matter how the world sees you. It doesn't matter how the, the society sees you. What matters is how God sees you. And this is during this time where the foundation will be founded um, in this season. And then number two, number two for our golden nuggets is you can see God's work in unexpected way. Okay, I'm saying either you're married or not or single, you can actually see God's unexpected way. That's already uh, absolute. No matter what your social, uh, your marital status is, as long as you are working for God and you are putting God your first priority, God will always give you the eyes to see the unexpected ways that he is doing in your current situation right now. So never also for the single women and men out there, never ever accept this statement that you are not capable. Yes, we are not capable, but God will, excuse me, will make you capable to do things that he wants, that he wants you to do. Yes, I am not capable because that's true. I'm limited. I have my limitation, but my God will make me and help me surpass that limitation. And then third, actually, this is the last, I think. This season can help you grow more as a person, as a friend, 
as a neighbor, as a son or daughter, and even as a partner, if you really have that uh, calling to get married, and even if you don't have that calling to get married, this is your time to be and to grow and to develop in the person that God wants you to be. And just, you know, brush off all those what the society tells you because those are just lies. The truth is God always got you. God always got your back. And that's the truth that we need to always remember. So this is very, um, uh, was this very short time for us, but um, I think this uh, next uh, minutes, we can have like whatever ideas or comments or or experiences actually that you want to share and what realizations that you were able to get during this um, short time that we have right now. I know the things that I've shared actually are coming from stories from the field, stories from the people that I've encountered um, for the last uh, 27 years of my life and I was able to really reflect on them and if you have any experiences or anything that you would like to share you are free to do so and if you have any questions you can actually uh, ask it away but I will not guarantee you that I can answer those questions because we are kind of exploring right now in this um exploring the topic right now so do you have any questions or anything that you want to share with the group and anything that you would like to add so i will give you like a, a short time to really um think okay someone raised their hands Annette. Yeah, I know. Um, yeah. After, after you mentioned about God created Adam and he was alone and yet complete, um, and then you talked a bit about some people say that they don't feel like they're a complete person, the half, other half of them seems to be missing. Do you think in some, some aspects that the, there's a greater expectation on the single person because of their lesser responsibilities um, can do you think that is something that as a single I'm, I'm, I'm a much older much older than you I've I've never been married I've never been I, and plus I'm, I'm a minister I'm a minister here plus I'm a registered nurse um, so I do have I'm a you know, bivocational pastor um, but do you think sometimes the fact of being single, People think, well, you don't have a family, you don't have to go and do this and that and that, that the expectation can be greater. And I think, do you think it's something that we need to learn that maybe sometimes we need to say no to some things instead of just taking extra stuff on ourselves because of our singleness? <laughs> if that's a, a good question or a comment to make. Yeah, I think um, you can really say that in some, uh, like, we have a different perspective. We are coming from different cultural background. We are coming from different, um, like, how we were raised. And I think, yeah, a part of it, really, the reality is there are actually great, greater expectation when it comes to single people especially in the ministry because like what you have mentioned yes you have all the time that you know just go there and do things and people are kind of especially in the church people are kind of expecting you to do all the things that they expect you to do which is probably not really that good i mean like what I said, you can actually choose the things that you can say yes, and you can also choose the things that you can say no. Like not every opportunity is your an opportunity that the Lord wants you to grab. And I think it has, it's, you know, it's, um, how do you say this? 
is also how we handle things and how we weigh things, I think. But at the same time, like what I have uh, shared earlier, that there are people out there in the church who doesn't really have that expectation at all in people, the single people in the ministry, because they think that some of part of ourselves is missing, which is not true. And I think it really, you know, it depends on their perspective. It depends on um, what really, what is, what is their values are, you know. So I don't have all the answers, but that's what I think when it comes to that question that, yeah, there are expectations, but there are also this part or another part of the coin that will make us feel um, not really useful. But those perspectives are totally different. But what really matters and what is really absolute is what the Lord tells about you. And just like Adam, so I think this is where the irony hits, is the Lord created Adam alone first and yet he actually see that no man should be alone and that's why he created eve and you can see that there is balance between those two i'm still exploring that topic but i hope you know you can somehow get the perspective and you can also somehow explore it by your own or by your friends so yeah so thank you, Annette, for that uh, beautiful question. And um, anyone who wants to share something or whatever, of, or ask something, or maybe um, anything, idea, or uh, aha moments. So. Yeah, there is uh, a, a, a message here. Don't let other people pressure you. That's right. Because we are really in a society. We are living in this society that has so much pressure, so much expectations. And we are, you know, sometimes overwhelmed. But I really hope that you can find refuge on the things that we have um, learned, on the things that we have tackled this morning. So don't let other people pressure you while you're single. Enjoy your life being single in the ministry. Yeah, you really need to enjoy your time in this season. Because like I said, it will never come twice in your life. But there are some situations that allows that. Anyways, do you have any more questions or ideas? So, okay, so I think everyone is very much satisfied. So I don't, um, I don't know about the coaching time. Uh, yeah, the coaching time is, uh, it will be 11. And now, oh, 11. Yeah. Um, we if, can, if, oh. yeah. Yeah, we can start. Sure. Yeah, it will be great. Uh, we... Excuse me. Uh, before before we do the coach, uh, coaching part, uh, we have to do something also. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah. Uh, okay. Before before we proceed, uh, I also want to say about Adam. Also, my thought. <laughs> I'm thinking before. <clears throat> uh, actually, Adam also did not expect God to give him a wife also. I, I am thinking about it because mm -hmm. God, only God see that he needs, but he did not expect from God. So he's okay with his single life. So that's what I'm thinking about. <laughs> yeah, I think if we don't want to, I feel well, that, that's okay for me also. And <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much for today talk. Uh, the topic is re really interesting. So, yeah, thanks to our speaker for sharing this topic. After this, 
maybe after this workshop, some of you or us <laughs> are convinced to be a single and do ministry, effective ministry for God's <laughs> yeah, in the mission. So, <clears throat> oh, um, I think Anna needs to say something. Okay. I was just thinking, um, if you know, if people aren't satisfied and content, and they go seeking a partner for life because they they believe they can't survive alone, and sometimes, and I've seen this happen in some some friends, they've had disastrous marriages. You know, they've probably had lovely children out of that relationship, but in the end. They have, the, you know, with the breakdown of the relationship, they've ended up alone. And um, for whatever means their partner has left them, they have left in a manner that they're still alive, but they are not celebrating their lives um, as like in that kind of partnership. So, as you say, you can be single completely which is what most of us could be, or else you can be single again, but you've still got your family, you've had that relationship, you've, you've gone through a lot of things with that partner, husband, wife, whatever, and then you're back into that. And then again, I think it's they themselves then would have to find their own self back in that and not that their walk with the Lord may have, may have changed, but the circumstances have changed. So, again, that's a, a different angle, I think, on that singleness, again, uh, from those of us that maybe have been single for, well, I'm 66, so yeah, I've been single for a long time. <laughs> but, but what I wanted to share, back many years ago, I had the opportunity of helping friends who, 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 her husband was, was really sick. And because I was single, because I, I was also a nurse, I'm also a nurse and I had block holidays, I used to take my time and go and serve them um, and help them in that situation through the illness, um, help look after the house, help take the kids to school. Had I been married um, and had a family of my own, I would not have had the, I wouldn't have had the ability the time and the privilege of helping this, this particular family. So in a sense, it's, um, and that was, you know, for a good season up until he passed away and then, you know, a little bit beyond and then they moved here from Australia to New Zealand and, you know, so different things happen. But I would not, I would not trade that back for anything of the, the privilege of serving a Christian family, children that just needed someone to be there, sometimes to discipline them, um, take them to school, just not to, not to replace the mum, but to be there so that the mum, she could spend time and do some things for herself whilst you know, she was going through this time with her husband and his illness up until he passed away. So... Those, are, to me, I find those have been added blessings in 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 life as you know, as a Christian. And I've only been the pastor here for since nineteen. I mean, since two thousand and seventeen. So I'm a very <laughs> I'm young in the ministry. I think I was ordained beginning of um, January last year, just before COVID came in. And I've actually got IGS coming. Um, tonight and he's going to be preaching here tomorrow so um and it's uh, nearly an eight hour drive from Brisbane to where I am <laughs> so, so those are the little sacrifices but I would not trade for the way my life has been for a marriage that may not have been what God wanted this what, what would do best for me and um so that's just a little bit of a testimony as well well, that's very wonderful. Actually, while you are sharing, I kind of, um, something came out in my mind. It's like you are a single loaf of bread that was being broken. 
to many people and I think that's very wonderful. And yeah, there's so many uh, messages here in our chats that they actually want to share. <laughs> you can actually share with, you know, with your own voice or open your cameras if you are comfortable to share that because your testimony and your experiences can actually, you know, help people realize something or maybe that's the testimony that they are wanting to hear right now so don't be afraid to share you know your testimony but we really appreciate the sharing that we have right now and yeah Mudo what do you want us to do right now thank you Anna for that uh, yeah actually uh, Dr. Ruger also wanted us to present a certificate to the speaker. That's why I want to read it to the speaker for the speaker. Oh, let me share the screen. Yeah, this is for our speaker today. Uh, we want to say thanks and uh, uh, present a certificate of appreciation. So this is from uh, Church of the Nazarene, Asia Pacific region. So certificate of appreciation presented to uh, Sarah, Sarah Palusa for being a resource speaker in cultivating the call, advocating and nurturing the call of ministry to women on the top of single, but not sorry. Given this ninth day of October, 2021, uh, yeah, here, Dr. Ruger, <laughs> sign here. So thank you so much to our speaker today. So I think we can go, we can go to the uh, uh, coaching program. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Sarah. And so um, I appreciate this topic. I came to um, the field as a single person and then now have had four children on the field. So we're grateful. I love being a part of um, single ministry because that is how I started. So um, I want to say, uh, just open this up for everyone to think about when you hear Sarah talk about singleness as a gift, what's changing for you? Okay, I will go first. <laughs> um, so that some will s somehow share. Okay, I will go first. Um, I think first time I heard that, I actually have this uh, kind of I kind of encounter so much statements about being single as a curse because, you know, they think that loneliness is a curse and it's not really a good uh, time and not really enjoyable and not like there's no progress or no, like you feel like you're stagnant. But while doing this um, topic or exploring and researching about this topic, I kind of appreciate this um, single as a gift, not because it, there is no, like it's easy or there is no difficulties. I mean, being single in the ministry can be, hard as well we acknowledge the challenges but at the same time it is full of blessings it is full of gift and like what i said it really depends on how you will see it on how you will look at like what part of the coin you would want to choose to lean on and i think that's really it really changes my perspective and really somehow makes me feel like more appreciating the season and more, you know, submerging myself in this season. So, yeah. I think it, it's, not a, it's, not a, it's not a change that is happening. Rather, it's, it's like an affirmation of, of, of the 
value the time that we have speak you know, and uh, yeah it makes me realize that I have the time I have the resources I can offer my, my service myself to a anywhere like if you have your family you can I mean if you if you are married already you can't you can't be in different places anymore because you need to be you have a you have responsibility to your own family you need to, to be with like you you need to prioritize them but if you are single you can be you can be anywhere you can offer your time freely yeah i just we appreciate that what lester was saying that it's not a change oh lester go ahead we're just confirming what you were saying how it for you it's not necessarily a change but more of an affirmation into that gift um and then abigail she posted that um it's a gift because it gives greater opportunity to focus on god um Abigail, would you want to share with everyone a little bit this morning when we were listening to Dr. Lena, she shared about how um, that woman's words impacted her so much. Um, talk a little bit about this dichotomy between like people, like focusing on people's words and God's words. So the question is open for everyone. Um, and it's a making the connection between what um, Dr. Lena shared and what Sarah is sharing with us now about um, <clears throat> just that finding God's view of yourself. Um, uh, so my question for everyone is, um, what does that do for you? when you're focused, when that's the focus. Yeah, I, I, I was writing some notes down with what she was saying and I, I was intrigued when she was saying about, yes, do we, you know, yes, you know, do we know what God says but do we know what God means by that? And sometimes our interpretation would probably be relevant to our own selves, in our own circumstances, in our own situations, when um, and we we basically, you know, God is not only my God, but He's, he's the God of the universe. And I'm I'm a Kiwi living in Australia, so I'm in another country. Although we're very people say you know, New Zealand or Australia are so similar, um, and I chose to come to Australia. Um, and I've made this my home for about 36, 37 years. And it doesn't matter where we are, and plus I've also had the privilege of going to, um, like I was reminded by Shang um, just a few, a few moments ago, she said she remembers me from the, the Unleash uh, Regional Conference we had in 2019 before COVID started. And that was my first time that I'd been to a regional thing um, outside of anything of Australia from district assemblies. And I guess, um, yeah, God meeting us where we are in our own circumstances, in our own situations. And, you yeah, know, when I heard what that woman had said to Dr. Lena with regards of renouncing your heritage, had that, had that been on the other foot, how would that lady have been receptive to that? Um, we're in our situations, we're in our circumstances, part of how God has led us, part of how we've walked, we've walked the walk that God's enabled us to walk. We are in the place that God wants us to be if we're in that relationship with him. And I think we can be empowered. Um, and sometimes I know, it's, you know regardless of whether you're a uh, uh, a, a man or a woman, um, we can all be empowered by our, our identity as, um, as, as single people 
and that we can be used, you know, with the, you know, with the power of the Holy Spirit in our ministry right where we are. It doesn't matter whether we might be the pastor, we might be in, um, in, in technical. I'd love to have a technical person here in my church. <laughs> yeah, I, I would love – I'd love to have someone that can do uh, more media stuff. There's those things. Uh, and, you know, so to be, in, to be empowered by God as who we are, we don't have to be attached to someone else. We don't have to have this other person on our arm. We are in our own identity. I am Annette. I'm I'm. I'm the pastor of the Billawira Church of the Nazarene. I'm also a registered nurse. Um, I work in a little country hospital, um, and I have the yeah you know, I have the opportunity of being with people when they've they've passed. I had the privilege of doing a funeral for one of our residents not long ago. I was on night shift, and their mum passed away. And in the morning before, the daughter said to me, "Will you do the service when this is over?" And it was, I was, my heart was warmed that they thought that they could ask me to do her service. So in a sense, um, I've been used by God in both, in both fields, as a registered nurse and as a pastor in my church. And, and I've been in the Nazarene church since I was 12. So it goes back to Christchurch, New Zealand. Um, and I, I just love what, you know, the work of the Church of the Nazarene with missions um, and all those. I've only been on one work, this work and witness team to Fiji back in 2001, so that's 20 years ago. You know, so, um, and that, as a single person, that was, you know, and I know some marrieds do those things. So it's probably sometimes a little bit easier. Um, and God's helped me financially. And I like that's one thing I try and instill in, in with my church and the board members of, of stewardship, not only financial, your time and those type of things. So um, in a sense, I don't find and I haven't found in all my 66 years of living <laughs> that being single has been a handicap. It's, I certainly haven't. Um, found that at all and I trust those of you in your younger years as you go through life no matter where God sends you no matter, no matter where you serve him that you're doing it you know, to the best of your ability unto him and I think keeping ourselves focused is probably important keeping ourselves focused just a few words <laughs> yeah thank you Annette why don't why don't everyone take a minute and write in the chat box um, one word that's coming to mind for you when you think about focusing on God's view of you? Yes. Sorry, my connection here is so poor. So I tried to write. <laughs> I tried to write my um um, how I can share my uh, feeling or uh, what happens inside of me. So I was refreshed, and and so the question is, what happens inside when that is the focus? Finding God's view of uh, me. So I was I was writing here and. Um, I felt that I'm so blessed and flattered because I am single <laughs> and, I, and I can focus to God's view for me. I am 30 years old now. I was a uh, lesbian before, way back, I, uh, 2016, I think, 2016, 2017, before. Before I came here in church, uh, GMA Church of the Nazarene, I was a lot of girls. After of the um, after of the Nazarene, I was um, uh, attending church, and I was afraid of that time. I was afraid uh, maybe they will they will um, uh, what do you call that? Um, 
uh, they will push me outside because I am a lesbian or they will talk to me uh, you will you have to dress uh, here because uh, uh, we are Christian like that so I was afraid uh, if if they will judge me so after a few years attending the uh, worship service uh, first first time I, I was um, I felt so um, I cannot explain the feeling the first the first time I hear a Christian song I felt crying and I was amazed and I don't know what to do because um, I am I, I am crying <laughs> yeah that that time was so happy and I am so I cannot explain how I am I how I bless how God blessed me that that day so uh, after after uh, a few years um, attending the worship service uh, in here in Jimmy Church of the Nazarene I never noticed I was transforming to be I was transforming by the grace of God a lot of people uh, saying that oh you have to be married because you're at 30 years old now so uh, here in the Philippines uh, a lot of people um, talking about uh, you have to be married because uh, you have to uh, bear a child like that and etc so I was not pressured because uh, because I know that if God gave you a partner if uh, if that is his will uh, I will embrace it if I am stay single and I will embrace it because I have lots of ministry in our, in our church and I am so blessed to be the part of um, the a lot of ministry and the the family in the church was um, giving me a task of uh, being a church bird, being a staff in Lingap Bata and I was so focused and and I was so focused of the the view of God, how He changed me, and how how transforming me every day. So, if God give me a partner in life, I will embrace it. But if God will never give me a partner because I am I have a lot of um, ministry to deal with. Uh, God will will um, give me this uh, journey. So uh, thank you for listening. <laughs> yeah, thank you for sharing with us, Mary Grace. I love I love how um, you shared about God's transforming power, and just during this time, during this um, these years of worship it was through his worshiping him that he transformed you and knowing that when we choose to focus and worship we are transformed so thank you so much um just from the chat box annette she shared abel and sarah shared growth some of the feelings lester you um shared about understanding that we have time to savor and it sounds like you're also feeling um, like un, unrestrained. So like also just being able to um, do it, do the, all the things that you'd see. Um, Harriet Ed, consistent. Um, and that knowing that God in, in our view of God, that um, when we look to ourselves, maybe we like this thing one day and that thing the next, or this part of working for somebody this way or that part the next. But whenever we stay in our focus of God, then it's consistent because God is consistent. Thank you so much for sharing that. Um, Christy just unleashed, um, which is beautiful that you can be fully bloom be that beautiful masterpiece of a flower that God clothed. Um, and for Abigail, the um, focusing on God and pursuing him, 
without other distractions. Um, and so just being able to focus. Everyone, you, I'm so grateful for the way you guys are participating. I wanna ask a question that um, is a little bit sensitive. So if you do, you can respond in the chat or um, just write, maybe you're writing in a journal, you can just write some notes for yourself. Um, <clears throat> part of what Sarah shared with us is about um, finding God's view of us and um, healing in our view of ourselves. Even um, I was very touched that when, Cher when Sarah was speaking and she said, I'm going a little bit fast, but that's okay. Just the grace that she has for herself, the grace that's obviously from God. Um, and when Dr. Lena was sharing, she also talked about um, the healing of our heritage. Um, what part of these, of this, what part today do you want healing in? So I'll just give you guys another minute because this is a personal question to just sit and think about it. And if you wanna respond in the chat box, you can, if you feel open to sharing or if you wanna share openly, you can too. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, what part of me or yeah part of me that needs healing is I came from a bad relationship in my past I am in mean, my last relationship with you know my girlfriend and uh, yeah I think it's my heart that needs healing I mean it's not that I enjoy being I mean I enjoy being single but I, I still want to, you know, uh, start a family and have that, enjoy those, enjoy those uh, blessedness. But yeah, as of the moment as I am, I mean, this is a part of the healing process, I guess. So yeah, I'm severing this moment and just enjoying everything that God is doing in my life and with the ministry that I have been involved in. Yeah, uh, I think that's it. <laughs> Um, what I was saying, I feel comfortable in myself and in my relationship with others and my relationship to God, um, but I don't feel a need for healing per se. Um, I guess the, I, I probably went through things <laughs> maybe many years ago, but um, I think being comfortable in who I am um, I, I, I feel comfortable in that. Um, I don't feel embarrassed about my, my singleness. Um, I don't get ridiculed by people. I don't get accused of being all kinds of things. Um, so I am who I am as God's, as God's made me and created me and how he loves me and I love him as I am. Um, so, and I think keeping that openness in my life to him um, is is part of of help, you know, helping me develop to be the person I am today. Yeah, thank you, Annette. It looks like a lot of people really resound with you, with your sharing. Thank you. So uh, you were going to share something earlier. Would you like to share now? Um, I think for me, aside from the physical healing that we, everyone wants, healing from COVID and all this stuff, I think um, healing from, you know, um, accepting the things that I am not capable of doing, though it's kind of ironic because um, I said that that's not true, you know, but 
um, I think he healing from that kind of mentality that uh, there are things that I can't do, which is true, but there are those things that I can do, the Lord can do it for me. And I think most of um, part of me are kind of like um, struggling with that because I want to do everything like doing things by my own and not really relying on God. And I think that's the one thing that I really need healing from. Yeah, thank you, Sarah, for being really vulnerable with us. As we wrap up these last several minutes, um, just take a, t a minute to respond to um, what is something you want to do differently or think differently after these two sessions? Who wants to share something that you're going to do after these two sessions? I believe Christy's talking, but she's on mute. <laughs> okay, good morning, everyone. <laughs> Yeah, I am, so this webinar is kind of a advice for us young young leaders in the church, young ladies. <laughs> so um, I write here, um, singleness, a, 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 this is a reflection from the question last earlier and this question, this question. So singleness is a gift. I don't need to rush, but to wait in God's will. So in this, I will focus on the works that God entrusted me and to understand myself more and to rely to God more and to enjoy everything while waiting because wait, waiting is not wasting your time and waiting is follow, following God's timeline for me and for us. So singleness is really a gift. Thank you, Ati Sarah, for that. <laughs> Good. Thanks for sharing, Christy. Hi, is it okay if I go ahead? It's yeah, hard. Hi, everybody. I'm Haretta. Um, yeah, when I had signed up for this, um, I was really interested by the title, Single But Not Sorry, mostly because I am currently like right in the middle of my season where of my season of singleness where I had to choose to be single like in my past seasons of singleness I was single because a relationship ended but right now I am in a season of singleness where I have chosen this time to be single and I think I wanted to answer the first question but I think like everybody I was quite shy um about how what, what it means to me when I hear that singleness is a gift and when I hear that um, immediately what my heart feels is that when I think of singleness from now on, it's no longer going to be associated with loneliness. Being single is not being lonely or being alone or missing half of me. I want singleness from here on to be a whole option and not a half option. Like, you know, prior to today's session, I was seeing singleness as, oh, I'm just waiting for a partner. But what if God's telling me my child, my destiny for, my, for your purpose that I've selected for you is to be single and do your ministry. And so I think from here on, I definitely want to start Start viewing singleness as an option wholeheartedly and not just a half option waiting for the next half when I find a partner. If I do or if I don't, singleness should also be an equal option to me. Like, you know, I should be open-minded to singleness the same way I'm really 
really open-minded. And when I say really open-minded, I was really open-minded to marriage. Like, you know, I seek it. I'm praying about it. I want it. I see my parents married. I see my aunties and uncles and like really happy God married, um, God given marriages. And so I, I think I'm really excited about this because this is this, um, all this information and lessons have come in time for this season where I'm choosing to be single with God, you know, like I, I really need God for this season. And so, yeah, thank you for a great session guys. Yeah. Harriana, that was so beautiful where you said choosing to be single with God. Well, thank you everyone for sharing and staying for this coaching time. Is um, what is, is, does anyone else want to say anything very briefly before we go? Uh, yeah, actually, <coughs> I also think I want, want to say thanks to the speaker and to our coach today. Actually, it was my, yeah, it is my very first time. <laughs> Uh, I'm so nervous, so I don't know what to do, but I do thank you so much for uh, Sarah. She is my, she is my friend also. <laughs> yeah, here I can see Lorraine and Hillary. They are very good friend of me. So it is my uh, opportunity to learn being single. And I also learned something uh, from my friend. <laughs> One of my friends, he said that being single is not, it, it doesn't mean not married yet. <laughs> so something like that. So <laughs> yeah, I do thank you so much for everyone uh, for uh, joining our uh, workshop today and our coach also. Thank you so much. Uh, yeah. Do you have anything to say, anyone? Rachel? Oh, okay. Oh, no, <laughs> okay. <laughs> I thought you wanted to say something. Okay, thank you so much. Have a good day and have a good night, everyone. Thank you.